Hey everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of Fergie 3D. I'm your host Fergie. Today we're going to talk about fixing some prints. You know I had that under two big problems under extruding before I replaced the fan. So now I've got to go back and fix the prints that I had before with the areas that were under extruded. So today we're going to fix the under two prints and I'm going to show you several different applications, uh, the way they work and when you would use them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Fergie 3D. Now I'm, I've Googled everything just like everybody else has about how to fill in the gaps, cracks, and seams when you're joining PLA or working with PLA models, right? Um, I know that there's about four major ways of doing it. There's Bondo, there's Superglue, there's um, Wall Putty, and then there's uh, this plastic wood putty. Now I have three of the four here. I don't have Bondo because it's hard to put together. Um, it makes a mess, it's very smelly. And so that's not something I'm really using in this demonstration. But I do have the other three. So let me show them to you. Okay, here's the super glue. And here's some plastic wood. Now the plastic wood I got at Home Depot. I get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards. Walmart, just about any superstore is going to have something similar to this, which works great. And then the third thing is the um, wood putty, or the wall putty. I have some right here. Let me grab that. I don't know. I didn't have that in the beginning. But there you go. Now, I got a tube. I know it comes in buckets and tubs and several different ways of applying, but I thought the tube would be a little bit easier to use. Okay, so let's talk about super glue. Um, I have a cube here. Let's see if we can get this on film. This was a cube that I had done previously for the Andrew 2. There you go. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's um, just strands here really holding it together. And on this side, I used super glue. And on this side, I used the wall putty. Spackle. On this side, I used the plastic wood. So those are the three different ways that we're using. Now the super glue is kind of interesting because the super glue, which is on this side, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. You don't need to see me anymore. You need to see the good stuff. There we go. Okay. Now the super glue. You use it with the combination of the super glue and some kind of binding agent. It can be flour, it can be baby powder, anything that's a white powdery mix, talcum powder, is going to work. And the way I applied it, you can do it two ways. You can pour the super glue down on a plastic lid or something and then mix the white powder in and then apply it with just an exacto knife. Or you can put the super glue on first, a little bit heavy and then dip it or pour the powder on top of it and then use your uh, knife just to mix it in. So I used the second way. Um, I went ahead and put the super glue on first and then I went ahead and um, put the powder on top of it and then I used this to stir it in and then pack it down flat. Now it doesn't cover as good as the other two. It does have a lot of texture to it so this is only good for small areas like seams, but I'll tell you this, this super glue is rock solid. In fact, it's harder than the plastic around it. So if you need something that's going to be durable, if you need something that's going to last you, if you need something that's not going to come apart, definitely go with the super glue for very small areas as in seams that you want to be smooth. Okay, now the second way is the um, spackle, the wall putty. Now what I found with the wall putty is it goes on thick and dries out very, very quickly. All right? So it's hard to put it on and then smooth it into the cracks because it becomes uh, kind of chalky very, very quickly. So I recommend a different technique for this. And I'll show you what that technique is. Let me zoom down a little bit here to my waiting samples. Here we go. All right, so. I have 
A uh, small painter can table. I, I find that these small painting things work really, really well to contain stuff. Now, what I do, let's see if I can get this in frame. Here we go. You see, one of these has water, and this one has a little bit of spackle in it. If you take the spackle, uh, let me take some of that, and just rub it on here, as you can see, it becomes kind of pasty very, very quickly. And I'm not sure it's even getting in the cracks. So what I recommend is you take your fingertip, you dip it in the water just a little bit, and then you rub it over the spackle. And because it's water-based, you can see that the spackle is almost becoming a liquid. And at this point, not only can I push it into the seams, but then I can smooth it out over the surface. And then my prep later on when I'm sanding is much, much quicker. So that's how you would work the spackle. And on the top part of this, I've already um, sanded it out and it looks perfectly smooth. Now, the drawback of using spackles is to be very, very soft. All right? Um, if you use white spackle and then you go to handle it, um, even use coarse sandpaper, it can ruin the finish that you're trying to get. So, uh, spackling is very delicate. Now, a good place to use spackle is on a model that's going to stay white. Now, I happen to have a model here. I printed out the crank with the finger, right? And if you take a look, you can see right here that this was laying fat, flat, and it's raised up here. So I have the concentric circles that you see on a model, which is really irritating because I have a perfectly smooth area here, and then here, like a tree, with a knot in a tree, you can see the dot that's moving out. Now, if I was to take spackle and apply it to that area, because this is going to stay white and got a little bit wet and just worked in circles to make sure it was getting in the cracks. As you can see, it's really smoothing out the contours that you were seeing until they will literally disappear. A little bit more of this. There we go. A little bit more water. And then I'll stick this somewhere to dry. So now I can have the same white finish as the PLA that I like for this without um, any sanding marks on one place where it's not sanded in another. And all I have to do once it dries is lightly go over it with an 800 grit sandpaper and then hit it with a sealant, a semi-gloss, and that will get rid of the concentric circles that you see. Also in the back here, if you take a look, not only does it have the concentric circles, but it also has some places that need filling in. So later on, I'll go back with the spackle, fill that in as well. And then this is something I don't have to worry about painting. I can just spray it and give it away as a uh, Christmas gift. Now, if I'm going to handle a model a lot, say like this model right here, I'm going to use the plastic wood fill. Now, the plastic wood fill is applied much like the spackle. Um, instead of going on white, it does go on brown. So when you use this, get it back in there, you are going to have to paint it over. There's no doubt about it. So for any projects that you're painting, this is perfect. Let me go and open this up. Now, this applies just like the spackle. When I get a little bit on my fingertip and I rub it in, I mean, it goes in, but I don't think it's filling everything. I think it's sitting right on the surface. So I dip my finger in the water and then rub it over top of this, and this liquefies as well, just like the spackle. Gives me that same really soft, great finish. Um, and once it's finished, um, it's easy to paint because this is paintable which is pretty incredible. So it does everything for you. You wouldn't even need to prime this. So let me show you how this is applied to a bigger model. All right, let me zoom out a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so we've been working on her for a while. If you remember, she printed out, but the top didn't print. So we had to redo the head and the shoulders. So now I have the head and the shoulders, but there's a lip right here, as you can see. So I'm going to stick my finger in here, 
and get a little bit of water, water back. I usually put my finger in the water first, and then I take some of this on my finger, and that way it's ready to go. And what I'm going to do is go against the grain here. So in this case, I'm going to go from the bottom to the top, and just let that fill in the gaps as I go along. And it doesn't take a lot. A little bit more. There we go. And let me get around the straps here. Now you can also see that um, right on the top here, it's not filled in as much as it should be. So as I fill it in with my finger, you can see that those are, all, are also going to be filled in for me, which is great. A little bit more. But that's more than I have to paint. So you've really got to be committed to painting this because once you do this, it's going to stain the PLA brown and there's no going back. All right. So, now you don't want to apply it so thick that you lose detail. And this is a great thing about using the liquid is with the liquid, even if I was to go over this area here, as long as I clean it up a little bit of water, it's going to fill in the cracks, but I'm not going to lose the detail from any of the facial expressions or any of the lines of clothing. Let's put a little bit right here. Now you see how that went on? It's kind of clumpy. A uh, dip of water, and it becomes shiny, and it flows right into all the areas that I want to smooth out. All right, just a little bit more here. go. I'm going to backfill so the, all the excess gets up in the cracks that I want to fill. There we go. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and this whole area here, once it dries, it will be ready to paint. Now, how can you tell when it's dry? You don't want to start sanding these before they're dry because if you do, uh, the grit from the sandpaper is just going to cause all kinds of problems. So, what I recommend is you use the touch method. Now the touch method, I'll show you on the cube. As this dries, it starts cool and then it warms up. So if you touch an area, say here, and it's still cool to the touch, and that means you have a little bit further to go. Uh, when it's no longer cool to the touch, that's when you know that it's dried all the way inside, the moisture has been wicked out, and it's ready to be sanded. Now when it's ready to be sanded, there are several ways to do it. Now I do have three grits of sandpaper that I use. Um, I use a 120, 220, and 600. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Fergie 3 as much as I did, and you have a great day.